Hey everybody, this is Games Plus James, and welcome back to our Unity two-player tutorial series where we're making our little fun snowball fighting game. So, now that we've added animation and we've added the ability for our player to actually throw snowballs as we're running around the level, we can see that the game is kind of starting to come together. It's doing everything that we wanted to do so far. And the next thing we need to do is add some actual uh, other players into the game. So, so in this episode we're going to take a look at how to do that so the first thing we need to do is actually just quickly create the other player uh, and basically all it is is just a duplicate of our first player but we're going to make some changes to it so that it makes a little bit more sense in our game so first things first let's just duplicate player one so we're going to i'm going to hit Control and d to duplicate them and we're going to call this player two and i'm just going to go back to our scene view here and we're going to drag player two over to the right here I'm actually going to drag both of them kind of down so they're actually starting out touching the ground rather than floating in the air uh, and then player two over here so obviously on our player two we want them to be facing um, to the left so how we will do that to start the game off is we'll set this to be minus one but for the moment we're going to leave this at being just one because we're going to uh, make some changes to the animations and we don't want to make those changes when the scale has already been flipped around because that can uh, end up uh, introducing some problems that we don't want to have to deal with later on so now that we have our player two um, what we need to do basically is duplicate all the animations that are being used for player one and make player two versions of them so if we go into our animations folder we'll highlight all of these objects here Again, we're going to hit Control and D to duplicate them. And it'll take a couple of seconds just to make them all. And you'll see now we have Player 1 Idle, it was the old version. And then we have Player 1 Idle 1. So what we're going to do is rename that to be Player 2 Idle. Chop the 1 off the end. We're going to do the same with all of these ones that have an extra 1 at the end of it. So we're going to chop off the 1, change the first to P1 to P2. Do the same with our throw here chop the end off with walk change it to two chop the end off and then finally uh, our animators which are what we uh, use to control all the animations did, because that was just set at player one it automatically updated the player to be two when we duplicated it so that's perfect we're happy with that so now what we do is go into our player two in our hierarchy over here find the animator component down the bottom and instead of the controller being player one we're going to switch this over to be player two like that and now when we make sure that we still have player two highlighted if we switch over to our animator window and again if your animator window is closed just go to window and animator down here and what we'll do is what we ha have to do very simply is rather than having to go and reset all of these to be replaced uh, like so we don't have to like delete all these and set up these new animations back up in here what we can actually do is just very simply go to p1 throw here for example and we can rename this to be p2 throw and change the motion here to be p2 throw as well so we'll do that for all of them here p2 idle change this to be p2 idle like that p1 walk p2 walk and set the, the motion to be p2 walk and then jump the exact same like that and p2 jump so now we have it set up so that it's using the correct animations but of course at the moment our animations are no different the exact they're the exact same as the player one animations were so we'll switch back to our scene view and much as we did before we're going to drag our project window here up to the right so that we're able to look at it here and also we're able to look at our animation timeline and we'll go into our art folder drop it down and now we'll scroll down below the blue guys to where we have a bunch of the green guys so we're going to make changes to our idle animation first so we're going to take the first four green sprites and drag them in here like that so now if we hit play our green guy is bouncing up and down just the way we want them to then we're going to switch to player to walk and we're going to take the walk animation sprites which are the first four here just like what we had with the the blue guy our walk animations are kind of um 
There's some other stuff in between them, but that's okay. We're able to handle that. So we'll drag the first four above the first four that were previously there. And then we'll scroll down and grab the other two and pop them in at the end like that. And now if we hit play, just to make sure, we see our little green guy run along like that. Perfect. Next thing we need to change is our jump animation, which is just the one single sprite. So we can pop that in there, make sure that is the right one. And then finally, we have our throw animation. And we can pop this in here like that. And if we hit play, now we have our player two throwing just the way we want it to. So we can now make sure we turn off the record mode. Actually, one thing we should do as well is on the player two in the hierarchy here, uh, we can now, now that we're finished doing the animations, we can drag our project window back down here. So in our hierarchy, we make sure we have our player two selected. And then over here on our sprite render, we're going to switch this around so that it's using one of the green sprites there like that. So now we have our player two starting out in the world. And what we can do is then set the scale to be minus one, so the player is facing the right way. The next thing, of course, we need to do is we don't want our players to have the same controls, because uh, if we started the game like this at the moment, we'll have both of our players running at the exact same time, and that's no good for anybody. Um, so what we'll do is just simply, now that we have a player two set up, we can go down here and reassign these buttons. So I'm going to make, say, the left be... Um, we'll make it be the left arrow like that right will be right arrow like that we'll have jump we'll just have jump be up arrow and throw ball will be say we'll make that be enter if I can find oh maybe it's return is it Return, there we go. That's what I was looking for. Okay, so now we can, if we hit play here, we can move our player one around and we can also move player two around. So they can both move around independently of each other. It's kind of a bit hard to control two of them like this, but it can also both fire snowballs all to their heart's content. So perfect, so that's our two little players kind of set up in our world. There's not really anything else to getting our two players working. Now we just have them working. As I said before, you can assign the controls to whatever way you want to do it yourself. But that's our two players in action together. So the next thing we're going to take a look at is making the game actually um, function the way we want to, which is have our, our, our guys be able to keep score when we're getting hit. So we're going to take a look at doing that in the very next episode. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you all very soon.